a railroad switch, or some people call it a turnout, or even refer to it as a set of points, is a mechanical installation enabling railway trains to be guided from one track to another, such as a railway junction where a spur or siding branches off. The switch consists of a pair of linked tapered rails known as points, or some people call them switch rails or even point blades, lying between the diverging outer rails or stock rails. These points can be moved laterally into one of two positions to direct a train coming from the narrow end toward a straight path or towards a diverging path. A train moving from the narrow end toward the point blades up, either right or straight, is said to be executing a facing point movement. Unless the switch is locked, a train coming from either the diverging direction or straight will pass through the points onto the narrow end regardless of the position of the points as the train wheels will fa force the point to move open. Passing through a switch in this direction is known as a trailing point movement. A switch generally has a straight through track, which you see straight ahead there, such as a main line or even a, a spur line, and a diverging route, which was that would be the one going off to the right there in, into the plant. The handiness of insulation is described by the side that is diverging track leaves. Now this switch track going into the plant here is moving off to the right, so it would be referred to as a right hand switch, having a diverging path to the right of the straight track. When coming from a narrow end, a left handed switch has a diverging track leaving the opposite side, so it would be going off to the left like onto the main track there. A straight track is not always present like you see straight under the top there. Both tracks may curve off, one to the left and one to the right, such as a switch is be referred to as a Y switch because of the way it would be shaped. Uh, or both tracks may curve uh, with different radii while still in the same direction. You know, this track may go off to the right and then the straight track may go up and it may curve off to the right. So that's the basics of a switch track. Now let's look a little closer at some of its parts. What works the switch is referred to as a points level, lever rather. And this can either be manual like the one you see here, or it can be a machine uh, or remote that's controlled from a, a remote location. A points lever, or some people call it a ground throw or even a switch stand, is a lever and accompanying linkage that are used to align the points of the switch manually. This lever and its accompanying hardware is usually mounted to a pair of long sleepers that extend from the switch point, which you see there. They are often used in a place of a switch motor or infrequently used switches like this one on this siding. In some places, the lever may be some distance from the points as part of the lever frame and ground frame. To prevent the tampering of switches by outside means, these switches are locked up when not in use. And you can see that lock there. And the next point, uh, pardon my pun, is the actual points. This is the thin part of the rail that you see there. The points are the movable rails which guide the wheels toward either the straight or the diverging track. They are tapered at most switches, but on stub switches, they're square. And that's the points there. Another very important part of the switch and its operation is also this big piece you see here in the middle is called a frog, or also known as a common crossing. Uh, this refers to the crossing point of the two rails. 
Uh, this is usually put together with uh, about the same cut uh, lengths or bent pieces of rail uh, out of a single, sometimes it's, it's welded together, it's a single uh, manganese casting steel uh, for use on lines with heavy uh, use. Uh, the frog forms a part of the railroad switch and that's also used in a level junction where you let, like got two uh, lines crossing the same place. The frog is designed and ensure designed to ensure the wheel crosses the gap in the rail without dropping into the gap. The wheel and the rail profile ensure that the wheel is always supported by at least one rail. To ensure that the wheels follow the appropriate flange way, a rail check is installed on the appropriate opposite of the frog. This piece of rail you see up against the main rail on either side opposite of the frog is called a guard rail. The guard rail is a short piece of rail placed alongside the main or stock rail opposite the frog. These exist to ensure that the wheels follow the appropriate flange way through the frog and the train does not de derail. Generally there are two of these frogs, one you see there, one by each outer rail. Guard rails are not required with a self-guarding cast manganese frog, which we don't have there. That's on higher speed rails. As the raised part of the casting serve is the same purpose. This is for a, a low speed or a, a, you know, not a very frequently used uh, sidetrack switch there. The last and probably most important part of a switch operation is the protection of the main line. And this is the device, it's locked on to the wheel by the crew who gets finished putting a car in to the siding or diverging line. And it's operated by a mechanism similar to what controls the switch. And when this is unlocked and thrown, that big orange metal piece falls to the side. Now this piece you see here is controlled and that goes on to the main line, a switching assembly and electronics. So if that's thrown or if a, a train car comes rolling down and hits that and uh, the railroad term for that is called fouling, knocks that off then that will signal the main line to throw a stop signal for the train coming on. So that's a short, very brief, and I'm sure it's not all inclusive explanation of railroad switch tracks. Love to see your comments. Please don't leave any bad comments. If you want to leave a bad comment, contact me directly and I'll show you what you can do with those.